Hey guys, it's Ann with cnsave.com, back for another week of See and Sell, my weekly vlog with all my reselling activities in one. So eBay sales, FBA updates, anything I pick up. Um, and I'm starting another week and starting off with a sale of a Tommy Hilfiger women's jacket. Now this is a 3X and I picked it up at Goodwill. It would have been less than three bucks on sale. And it sold on sale for 18, no, $19 and 18 cents. Um, and the buyer paid shipping on top of that. And it is gonna go in a flat rate bubble mailer. Tommy Hilfiger is one of those brands that I'm kind of careful about. There's a lot of it around here because there are several department stores in their area that sell Tommy Hilfiger. Plus there's an outlet mall about an hour and a half away. So it pops up a lot. I don't find that the regular like men's dress shirts or just regular tops plain kind of stuff does well, but um, jackets, coats, uh, the sweaters that are kind of uh, bright colors and anything that's plus size or big and tall, I will pick up. So um, that's why I picked up this one. I thought this was interesting because this to me definitely looks like a man's coat. The red, white, and blue, it's kind of got that men's... I don't know it just has a men's look to it but it clearly is a woman's jacket or a woman's uh like athletic coat I mean it's nice I'm not saying that a woman couldn't wear it, but it always I don't know doesn't it look kind of like a men's jacket to you anyway um yep yeah, first sale of the week let's hope uh that things pick up so much for the fourth quarter huh well I should say that I've always said for a few years now that the fourth quarter is a myth for the kind of stuff I sell I mean you do get a big a somewhat uptick in sales but nothing that's so dramatic that I I think some people they rely on fourth quarter for everything they make in the year and I guess if you do toys and that kind of stuff um, it would be but for me doing vintage and clothes and whatnot I'm more focused on trying to keep steady sales all year long than putting everything into just one um, three month period but that being said it would be nice to see things a little busier it's definitely not as busy um, as I feel like it should be Maybe once the election is over. Today's November 8th, so this is the election day. <laughs> Hopefully when the election gets over, people kind of put it behind us and we'll get into the um, holiday shopping season full force. So it's now Tuesday night. Just had another sale come in. This is a vintage uh, Great Northwest Sportswear flannel shirt. It's vintage, made in the USA. You can tell by the tag. Um, where did I get this? Did I get it at Goodwill or an estate sale? I cannot remember. Probably Goodwill, which means I paid less than two bucks for it. And it sold on sale for $18 and, oh gosh, 19 cents, something like that. Uh, buyer paid shipping on top of that. It is over a pound, so it's going to go in a flat rate bubble mailer. So still Tuesday, it's Tuesday night, it's almost, it's past 11, I'm watching the election results. I will not comment on politics, um, but yeah, up watching as I'm sure most of you are. Um... So this Bible just sold for $34.99. I picked it up. I don't know where. It could have been free. It could have been less than a buck. Uh, the buyer paid shipping on top of that. They paid for media mail, but I'm going to go ahead and upgrade them to first class because it's under a pound and it won't be much more. And that way they'll uh, get it faster because media mail can take a super long time. So the reason uh, this sold for more... And what Bibles will sell for more is it's stamped, genuine leather. That's a big deal when it comes to Bibles. Uh, people like the genuine leather ones. I originally had it priced at $50, um, but uh, it got put on sale. It's really not that special otherwise. Uh, it doesn't have, it's not red letter. Uh, it has some maps, I think, in the back, but pretty plain. No study guides or anything, but because of the leather, uh, that made a difference. Also, having this bar, somebody's name kind of stamped in there, but didn't make a difference. So, yeah, bubbles can be hard to price, but um, the material, the leather covers, that is always a good indication to price it higher. Guys, it's now Thursday and it's Goodwill sale day. All of the Goodwills in my area are half off. Uh, and in my area, there are two in my immediate area, and then there are two 30 minutes away in opposite directions. So uh, I went to one 
uh, in another town this morning. My dad wanted to go with me. God bless Papa. He was, I'm like, are you sure you want to go? You know, you get so tired. And by the time we even got there, he was tired. And then we had, there was road construction on the way home. So we had a big detour. But anyway, um, I filled the trunk there. And now I am going to the two Goodwills that are in my immediate area. So I am here at the first one. You can see it back there. Um, I get a lot of questions about Goodwill sales days and whatnot. This is the thing, every Goodwill store is different. Goodwills are kind of like franchises. So you will find that Goodwills in your area are usually under one umbrella organization. Like the Goodwill organization in my area has eight stores that they run. Now those stores are as close to me as 10 minutes away and as far away as two hours away. Um, so that's when I say, all the Goodwills in my area are having the sale, but I'm only going to two or three. That's because those are the closest to me. The others are far away. So you need to find the Goodwill organization in your area. A lot of them have Facebook pages now. Um, if they don't, then you're going to just have to do the legwork and go to your stores and find out when they have sale days. I have never seen a Goodwill that didn't have sales days. Sometimes they're not very good at advertising them. Um, mine aren't great about it. Sometimes they put up a calendar on Facebook. Other times they don't. You've got to do the legwork yourself to figure it out. Um, sometimes these stores will have dollar days, $2 days, half off days. They used to do it that every store had its own day every month. But in the past, I think, year, they've clumped them all. So there's one day a month when all the stores have the sales, which is kind of a pain because that means I've got one day to get out to everything. But that's how they do it here. So you've got to do the legwork to find the Goodwill organization in your area. And if you're not finding anything, go in there and ask. Some have discount cards. Um, they'll have signage up in the stores about the sales day. If they have on Facebook pages but they're not posting, post a comment. You've really got to do the legwork um, to find out when the sales are going on in your area. Because I'm, I guarantee you they're having sale days and that's the time to go because I hear from so many of you the Goodwills are so high priced. Well, mine are too. I mean, they're not, I've seen a lot worse than what I get. But, you know, most of the things are four or five, six bucks here, which for me, buying something in second hand, a piece of clothing to resell it, I just don't pay that unless I'm for sure it's going to be like a $50, $60 item. I'm looking to pay under three bucks, which is what I can do here when they're having a half off sale because I think they usually have shirts are 425 and then coats but here's the thing coats and jackets range anywhere from 475 up to like 1595 depending on the material and the cut and blah 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 the store I went to this morning the girl was like picking everything apart and she was like really nervous about not charging me enough for something other times you'll go to a store and they'll just ring them all up one price my stores do not do the barcodes and the you know fancy pricing they just look at the item and they see where the little tag is. Is it on the collar? Is it on the sleeve? Is it on the hem? And to determine the price. So it's all over the place. But um, there are sales to be had at Goodwill if Goodwills are the only thrift stores you have. And they are for me. Now we do have a St. Vincent de Paul, which are just gross, disgusting. And a teeny, tiny, teeny, tiny little Salvation Army store, which is disgusting, dirty, nasty, and about the size of my living room. So for me, in terms of thrift stores, it's Goodwill. Um, and then also when the consignment stores are having clearance, the consignment store I go to is having clearance. But um, yeah, check out those sales. And now I'm going to go in and hope I can find some more good stuff. Goodwill number three. I'm finding some good stuff, but I'm really having to dig for it. There's just so much that, first of all, crappy brands like George and Faded Glory from Walmart. I swear that's like nine out of every 10 pieces of clothing. And then when I do find something good, uh, it seems like about 50% of the time, it's got serious damage, major rips, stains, just ugh. But I still am finding some good stuff. So hopefully I can um, wrap it up here and have plenty of clothes to get listed. Still have some to get listed at home, I shouldn't lie, but <laughs> I find it easier to deal with clothes lately. I don't know what it is, but whatever's working, that's what we gotta go with. It is a now Friday and I have a one sale. This, um, like a date book, I picked it up at a moving sale for a dollar and I took a best offer of $8 for it plus the buyer page shipping on top of that. 
So I recently have been running a 30% off sale on a ton of stuff. And most of those items, um, the sale came to an end. I think there's still a handful that were up. Like I, the first sale where I had most of it, 30% off, that ended. I still have some in another sale, the 30% off that's about to end. What I decided to do instead of going further was just to put best offer on everything because I just keep marking this stuff down and I'll still get people message me, oh, you take less, whatever. So I'm like, I'll just put the best offer on things and see what happens. And of course, right away I get two low ball offers and, but um, at least it's some activity, I guess. But anyway, so I did decide to take eight bucks for this just to get it out of here since things are so slow. And here are the clothes, some of them. My dad is still washing clothes that I picked up yesterday at Goodwill. So, Goodwill shirts are $4.25. Jackets range anywhere from $4.95 to like $15 something for leather. But some of them ring up at $5.25. Others are $5.95. I don't know. Most of what they rang up for me yesterday. They seem to have rung up at $5.25 and then half off. Now, some things were less. Some were those shirts. But in general, we're just going to go with I paid less than 3 bucks for <laughs> Between 2 and 3 bucks. We'll just say that. So, it doesn't really matter. I spent like 180 between three stores yesterday. So, um, this is a cold water, cold water creek which they have gone bankrupt, I believe. They're no longer in business, but it's an 18 women's and it's kind of this sparkly material. A tip when you go, if you're like me and you're looking at the coats and jackets, don't forget to check the sweaters and the blazers and the sweatshirts because if your store separates, mine does. Mine has sweatshirts and they have sweaters and blazers and even just regular clothes because a lot of times the jackets and coats will get hung up with the regular clothing. So it's... Uh, my stores have racks for coats and jackets, but I always find coats and jackets in other sections. So this is a vintage Wallow Blizzard Puff. I just thought that was funky vintage. Uh, I should say, maybe, I don't know if it's 80s or 90s. I mean, it's not terribly, terribly old, but it's kind of got that cool vintage look. This is a snowsuit. This is the thing one of the cashiers was like totally panicked that she was giving it to me too cheap, but it's a JCPenney snowblowing suit. So that is cool. I've never sold a snowblower suit before, although I know snowmobile snowblower, snowmobile suit and skiing suits, but I know they do sell. Uh, this is a wool Zero King made in America. Super, super gorgeous, I think. Got the wood buttons. You've got the funky plaid lining. It's definitely got like a 70s vibe to it. There's that. Okay. We are washing clothes, like I said, because, oh, if you could see the state of some of the clothes yesterday, I found a coat that I really wanted to get, but it was covered in hair. I was just like, nope, can't do it. I don't know what brand this is. This is, oh, Talbot's. I'm, yeah, Talbot's. And that is cool. It is a denim jacket with a, in green, which is usually, um, the color denim usually sells really, really well. So I bet this baby sells as soon as I get listed. This is a Nine West denim vest. I will almost pick up any denim I find unless it's Walmart brand. Although I have picked up denim that was um, Target brand if it was plus size. This is a Christopher, or no, I'm sorry, CJ Banks, which is, I guess Christopher and Banks is like the regular size and then CJ Banks is plus size. I think some malls have both stores. Uh, but this is a 1X denim. It's got the funky leopard pattern and it is a coat. It's got some padding in there, so a little warmer. This is a Cherokee. Again, I normally wouldn't pick up Cherokee regular clothing, but an extra large denim jacket I did get. Another color denim. This is Chico's, and it is a one. Chico's has their own sizes. I think it's zero, one, two, three for extra small, small, medium, large. I don't know. I'll have to Google it to double check, but a green denim there. Then we have a Lauren Ralph Lauren medium black denim jacket. A Old Navy. Again, Old Navy normally wouldn't pick up their regular clothes, but denim I will. Extra large uh, black denim. Izod. Same with Izod. There's tons of it around here, but um, denim. It's a large. Then this is a Old Navy medium 
lined denim, kind of like a barn jacket. Tons of denim, as you can see. Uh, Coldwater Creek, this is a um, 18 denim vest. Then we have Levi's. This is, what's the size? How big are you? 40. Nice lining on that. That should be a good sale. Then we have Gap Large Stretch. Always good. It has the stretch. I always put the fabric content in because if it's 100% cotton or like when you get the stretch, it'll have like a bit of uh, spandex or lycra in it. And I'll put that in there. So it has a bit of give to it. Union Bay. And I got this because this is 90s. Funky, funky, funky Union Bay. Got the lining in it. Then and more denim. Liz Claiborne. This is, I don't know what brand this is, Commodore. Um, but I got it because it's a 2X and it's a long, like, um, trench. This is Eddie Bauer, women's large. And then some overalls. These are Dickies. Again, I normally wouldn't pick up Dickies clothing, but with the overalls, um, I did. Made in Mexico large. So overall is always a good pickup. So now my dilemma is, okay, these clothes are not listed. And I'm working on that. These are the women's clothes that are. These are the men's clothes that are. The racks are full. So get another rack or start folding things, which is kind of a pain. I've got some sweaters folded. But I'm thinking it would just be easier to get another rack. Mm, I don't know what to do. I get these on Amazon, they're like 59 bucks. They're a great deal, they're really, really high quality, they work well, you can roll them around. I'll link them below if you wanna get racks, because I've had cheap ones that broke. And these, obviously, like the men's, how much stuff is crammed in here, but I can't get anything more in. <laughs> it's so full, so. Anyway, um, one sale tomorrow on Saturday, just a small tag sale. I think it's a lady who used to work for one of the companies I like and she retired, and so just every now and then she helps somebody have a sale. Um, is having one and then that'll be it and then hopefully I really really want to get clothes listed um, and then now what I'm gonna do is where's my box I am pulling some old stuff that has been sitting around that I only have like $9.99 or something on I'm gonna pull that stuff and take it to the consignment store because it's just taking up room at this point it's so darn cheap I can make it's just money you know <laughs> taking it at the consignment store and it's out of here. So I'm going to go through and pull stuff uh, that has been sitting here for a while and I am just ready to say goodbye to. It is now Saturday and we just got back from a very small, I don't even know if you could call it an estate sale. It was a tag sale. It was in the house, but it was just a family run thing and there, was, there wasn't there was much there at all. We didn't get anything. Um, but anyway, uh, just got home and had two sales. I just recently, my sales, my 30% sales ended. I think all of them have ended. There might be a few more items in there. Um, so everything's back up to full price, but I've put best offer on everything. But regardless of that, these two items sold at full price. So this is a men's Eddie Bauer jacket. It's an extra, extra large nylon jacket that I got at Goodwill. Uh, it would have been under three bucks for me. And uh, it sold for $24.99. The buyer paid shipping on top of that. And then this John Deere hat that I got for a dollar. Uh, it's been sitting around for quite some time. John Deere market has definitely gone down. But again, this sold uh, full price, $24.99, and the buyer paid shipping on top of that. And I do have some other best offers out there that I've just counter offered. So I figured instead of just keep sale, 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 and then still nobody buying it, I'll just put best offer and see how it goes. It usually annoys me because people send such low ball offers and you're like, really? Do you really think I'm going to accept a dollar on a $50 item? Like, come on. But um, just in an effort to get some things moving and things that I kind of, I've had a while, but I don't really want to mark down further. I mean, it could get to the point where what am I going to get down to? 60, 70, 80%. You know, if I can get a best offer over you know, if at least no more than half off, then we'll just try that. And especially since it's the holiday season, more people are shopping. Um, maybe it'll just generate some more sales. So still 
washing clothing from uh, the Goodwill sales. So I'll show you some more stuff. Um, this again, I got all of this stuff half off, so it would have been anywhere from two to three bucks for stuff, depending on how they rang up. So I got a Tommy Bahama shirt. This is a Port Authority Extra Large. These kind of nylon jackets that people can embroider really always do well for me. A nice pink London Fog jacket. Then a J. Crew. A Lands End Puffer. Let's see if I can get down in here. Another L.L. Bean. It's rare I find L.L. Bean, so I was pretty excited to find a few. This is another um, nylon jacket that can be embroidered. Another, oh, this is a Kansas City Chiefs vintage one. And I've got two of them. I'm doing a clothing haul. <laughs> a clothing table haul. And a cold water creek coat. A gap. Got a few sweaters. I thought I'd try something different. This is a Zara man. A Tommy Hilfiger polo. I got it because it was extra, extra large. A Nautica sweater because it was extra, extra large. Let's see what we got here. This is a pink. What is this? CMC. I got it because it was made in the U.S. and it's pink. And it's kind of like trench coat style. Levi's. Or Levi. 8 to 10. Does that mean it's a child size? I have to look that up. I think I showed you this one. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones I showed you yesterday. Then this is a Gap Extra Large pinstripe long, longer denim coat. And I don't think I showed you this one. This is cool. Um, it's just an old navy, but it's extra large and it's blue and it's got the funky lining. And I think I showed you all that. Yes, yeah, so I think we're caught up showing you what we've got so far. And my dad's still washing. Lucy, are you helping? Oh boy. Aren't you done yet? <laughs> oh, look at all, where did we get all these packing peanuts from? What? Where did we get all these packing peanuts? Well, you bought them. I did? Cool. Oh yeah, that's right. Lucy, are you helping? You helping? <laughs> Just had another sale. I accepted an offer of $12 for this Mary Kay cosmetic jewelry organizer. I picked it up at a garage sale for 50 cents. I've had it for a while. So uh, you can see it's over two pounds. Now the buyer paid shipping on top of the $12. They paid parcel, but with my discount and shipping online, I can upgrade them to priority. I'm gonna put this in one of these big poly bags. So it's Saturday afternoon and I just accepted a best offer of $30 for this little mommy doll. I picked her up for a dollar or for 50 cents at an estate sale clear out they were doing. I can't remember which, but I originally had sent this into Amazon FBA and then I got it back during one of you know their uh, free periods where they would send you stuff back because this is one of the things I sent in originally and it was commingled. Um, but I think this is the one I originally sent. Anywho, um, I've had it up on eBay. I had it as high as $49.99 and then um, Got an offer for, I think she sent like 18 and I countered with 30 and she took it. But, oh, this lady, then she, then for some reason she bought it outright for the full price. Then she sent a message, cancel that order. I only want to pay the 30. Then she put in for the cancel order. Then she wanted me to send her an invoice for the right price. I said, lady, you already, well, I didn't say lady, but I was like, since you already put in for a cancel request, I canceled it. It's relisted. Here you go. You're going to have to go through it again. So then she submitted the best offer. I took it fine there we go then she emails me I don't think the tracking you sent me is for the label I think it's for the canceled label I'm like there was no canceled label I never printed a label because you immediately canceled the order <laughs> the only tracking you've gotten is for the only label is printed this is the kind of person I don't leave feedback for until I make sure they've got the item they've left it for me because she's just very confused and seems a little agitated so anyhow this is what I don't like about best offer is having to communicate with people more 
I just like it when they come and buy stuff and go away. But anyway, so 30 bucks for this. She paid shipping on top of that. She paid parcel, but I was able to save a buck by upgrading her to priority using my discount and I can use a free box. So bonus for that. It is Saturday night and I just got some clothes listed and had another sale came through, come through. Uh, this is an NBC glass, a vintage glass with the etched peacock logo on it. I got it for 50 cents, I think. Uh, and it just sold for $24.99. Buyer paid shipping on top of that. You can see it's under a pound. So I'm going to send it uh, via first class. Then this is the last of the clothing that got out of the wash. We have a Hawkeye shirt. And I didn't think it was anything really special just with the plain logo, but I got it because it was a Tommy Hilfiger. So somebody got a Tommy Hilfiger shirt and then had the Hawkeye thing embroidered on it. Then we have, this is a Gap extra large blue, I guess like a peacoat. Everything's falling off. This is an Eddie Bauer XXL jacket. Another Eddie Bauer large tall this is a kind of like a denim shirt. Again, I wouldn't have picked this up except it was tall size. So this is a, a vintage, another one of these nylon jackets I love to pick up. A Cold Water Creek sweater, a Tommy Hilfiger XX, what is this? It says, oh, XXL um, sweatshirt. Again, Tommy Hilfiger I'm always kind of iffy about, but this is an XXL and it does have Hilfiger on it. So when people buy designer clothes like this, they like to have the logo. They kind of want to show everybody, hey, I've got a Tommy Hilfiger shirt. Then this is a Gap. It's a small, but it's a beautiful color, purple with the green lining um, jacket. And this is wool. Yes. And this is a Talbot's Petite. Um, petite eight. Yeah. So it's small, um, petites, but it's Talbot's, which usually does well for me. Um, it's just kind of a common mall brand, but it is one of the more pricier common mall brands. So that is kind of like a velour coat jacket, coat jacket. <laughs> I always put coat and jacket in my titles. Then this is a Bridgewater studio, which I've never heard of before, but it's a 16 W and it is a purple denim. And I just thought somebody will love have a purple denim jacket regardless of the brand and yeah so that's the rest of the clothing that I picked up at Goodwill and I'm going to take this pile up to get photos of and get that listed and then all of this and then all of that and I'm not doing any other listings until the clothing is done because I want the clothing on because it sells better than anything else although I have a problem because I am out of hangers. I'll just have to probably stack them back up there until they sell. Hey guys, it is now uh, Sunday and my goal today is to get as many eBay photos taken as possible. I really want to get these um, clothing pictures done so that the photos are ready to go and then, excuse me, my eyes itching, uh, then I can list throughout the week because for me, the pictures are always like, you know, the thing that's stopping me. I look at all the photos I need to do and I'm just like, oh, I can't even get started. But if at least I get started and I get the photos, then the rest of the process is so much easier. So I know that's how my friend Brent over at OUnit Productions, who used to do videos and does not anymore. And I know you're watching this one, Brent. Um, I know that's how he does it because he'll like, you know, say eBay picture day and he is blowing through and getting all the photos done so that he can then get them listed. Uh, throughout the week. So that is the plan for today. But I did want to update you guys on the health insurance situation that I talked about in my last video. So if you didn't see that brief update, I have private insurance uh, with Wellmark. My monthly premium was going up $200 from $385 to $575, so almost $200. Um, and that, I thought I had a $7,000 deductible. I guess that was a $5,000 deductible. But then it's like still maximum out of pocket would be $7,500 and blah, 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 blah. Anyway, so I go in and meet with my agent. And I had gone on um, Obamacare, healthcare.gov and priced things. And I talked with him and he didn't even make an attempt to try to talk me into keeping private insurance. He flat out told me I was going to be better off going on the exchange and looking there. Um, Wellmark, he said, isn't even selling 
new insurance policies in South Dakota. They'll keep the people who they have, but they're not even going to bother offering it to anybody else because the premiums are so high. Other states, things have increased by over 100%. So uh, they do other things, this insurance agent, Lucy's not barking, um, you know, they sell all other kinds of insurance, so they're not relying on selling health insurance to people, because that was my worry, I'd get in there and they'd like try to talk me into it, but he's just like, no, I can't even tell you, and a lot of people have been dropping it. The only way he said it could work for me probably is if I incorporated my business and then got into a group policy, blah, blah, blah. Um, but talking to my account, he's like, you don't want to do that because then the tax implications are different. So either way, it wasn't going to work out. So he gave me the form to cancel and I need to get that in. So I came back. Of course, this is Monday night now, <laughs> right before the election. Um, and I go on and I, the thing is when I initially went on and I was like testing out the pricing, it's just giving you an initial estimate. It's not the actual application. Papa's mowing. Can you hear him now? <laughs> We got mowing, we got barking. Um, so it wasn't until I started the actual application process that more real numbers came up. Um, I can get a lot better policy and coverage. However, this is the problem I'm having and that is that I'm self-employed and I own my own business and my gross versus my net income varies wildly depending on what kind of deductions I take. So it wants you, or I had to, basically guess my net income after expenses. Now again, a lot of my business expenses are things like um, utilities and car and you know things that aren't necessarily a monetary value in my pocket, but they do count as business deductions. I mean, last year I made more money than ever, but after my accountant got done, I didn't owe any taxes last year which is the great thing about business and that's why you do get tax breaks for having a business because it encourages, you know, people say, oh, don't give businesses tax breaks, but you want to give businesses tax breaks because when businesses get tax breaks, that means they can employ more people and those people get paid more and then those people go out and they spend their money at other businesses and those businesses grow. It's, uh, you know, it's a domino effect. The more money you make, the more money you're going to spend, which is going to help someone else make more money, more money, more money, more money. So that's why, um, you know, when Democrats, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to get political, but when Democrats come out and say don't do tax breaks for businesses, you want to do tax breaks for businesses. That helps our economy grow. Um, you know, and whatever you think of the, I'm not going to talk about the election. I'm not even going to go there. But like, the one point with Donald Trump when he said he didn't pay taxes is he's using all those business laws to not pay taxes or not pay much. I'm not commenting on that. I'm just saying that's how it works. So for me as a business, um, that's how it works. I can have all of these business deductions that the government allows you to take. And therefore, when it comes to my taxable income, it is a lot less than what it would be had I been um, getting a paycheck from someone else. However, so I had to guess because I went off 2015, which was one amount. 2016 is going to be a different than last year. 2017 will be different. It could be way more. It could be way less. I can't predict the future. I'm hoping it's more. So if it's more and I guessed under, I'll owe. If it's less and I guessed over, I'll get a refund. So I will be going to my accountant um, probably February when I have all my uh, forms in and I can go and give it to him. You know what? I'm going to tell him like what is the amount? What's my gross amount that I should aim for so I don't screw up my tax bracket? It's just such a pain. It should be everyone should be allowed to make as much money as they want that they can that they aim for. And if I pay taxes on it, that's fine. I'm not saying I don't want to pay taxes. I think you know, we all pay our fair share. It's just when you're guessing and you have to guess based on this insurance. So I'm kind of stressed out about that, that I've messed up my guesstimate. Um, the other thing, then the election comes and Trump wins. Of course, I want to repeal Obamacare. Now that I'm actually on the freaking Obamacare, I'm like, no, nah, don't repeal it, which I don't think is going to happen. They're already backtracking from that. And like my agent said, in order for them to repeal Obamacare, you would have to get senators to put their name on a bill 
that says, basically, we're taking health insurance away from 20 million, million people. Nobody's going to do that. Hopefully, they can fix things and work on what's there. You do, and you don't want to lose your pre-existing coverage. That was something that, for me, when I initially got health care um, 12 years ago, that, um, you know, they were coming back and saying, oh, you once took medicine for this, or you took medicine for that, and they just went through your whole record, and they could pick out any little thing and um, not cover it for you. So that's a good part of it. So I just, you know, fix it, please. It needs to be fixed because so many people, and I heard from so many of you guys who were saying how you have family plans and your rates are just skyrocketing and you can't afford it. So my advice would be to stay single and try not to make too much money in them and you can afford healthcare. What kind of choice is that? Anyway, so that is the update on that. I'm getting ready to fill in, or send in my form to cancel even though I've already signed up for 2017. On affordable health care I'm canceling my plan my agent did say that if I don't like the Obamacare whatever I can come back next year and I can get back on Wellmark it's not gonna be a big deal so that made I was reassured because I was afraid that if I gave it up that trying to get back on it was gonna be a nightmare and I was almost willing to pay more for that than to give it up in the fear that if something happens to Obamacare, then I'm not going to have anything, but I don't think that's going to happen. So we shall see. So I'm signed up for 2017. Coverage starts in January. Um, you know, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. So anyway, there's the update on that. And um, now I'm going to get back to taking photos. Yay. Just had another eBay sale. I accepted a best offer of $13.99 for these two coffee mugs. They're exactly the same. Uh, they are, I don't know how to pronounce that. Odagiri? Odagiri? Made in Japan. I've had these for ages now, I think two summers ago. And I probably picked them up for 50 cents each. Uh, they sold for $13.99. Buyer paid shipping and the best a deal is going to be the regional rate a box now, I've had people ask about how do you know when to send it in a regional rate a box and the answer is you don't until you go to ship it because when you're using calculate shipping you're basing the price on the weight of the package plus the person's zip code how far does it have to travel uh, this address is uh, South Carolina I can't tell right now blocking my screen is blocked anyway um so it just depends so what I do is I bring up the screen which let me see if I can show you the screen without showing you addresses when you go to print your label you've got this screen up here then right here carrier compare delivery services you go down here change weight and dimension and it brings up this screen and you can see all of the available rates for the weight. Now, so this package is over two pounds. Parcel is $9.97. Priority is $9.48. But then I go over here, regional rate A box is $8.15. So that is when I make the decision about um, how it's going to ship. All right, it's about three in the afternoon now on Sunday and I've just photographed all of these clothes. <laughs> This is only about half the clothes I have. It may be even less than half. Um, but I'm gonna stop here <laughs> and start listing this pile. I obviously am, it's almost uh, to my neck. So I also need more hangers and I need to clear some space on my racks, move things around. So I have all the photos of this uh, pile ready to go. And then this coming week, I can hopefully get some listed every day that is the plan so I feel really good all this stuff um, and like I said before starting the photos is always the most difficult part just getting the motivation to do that so now that that's done and they're ready to go a uh, listing should hopefully be um, a lot easier although finding the time during the weekdays is difficult but even if I can just get a few pieces on every day that will be a definite progress it is now Sunday night. I was getting ready to go to bed and I just had a sale. This is a, a Levi's jacket. It's a girl size, child size, which I don't, don't normally pick up, but I picked it up because it was denim. denim. Um, and I think well, it would have been less than $2 at Goodwill on sale because of its uh, kid's coat. So um, 
I just accepted a best offer for $11.25 or 24 cents. Yeah, 11.24. It's kind of weird, but again, I'm trying to move some of these clothes. I've had this for a while, so that's fine. Buyer paid shipping on top of it. They paid for parcel, but I can get a little better rate uh, putting it in a priority mail. Flat rate bubble envelope. So it is time for another Amazon FBA payout, and we are down this week. $118.41. Actually, two, that's two weeks, so that's a two-week total, so what, 60 bucks a week, not even that, for the past two weeks. You can see that was off $302 in sales, and then you can see all the fees we have there. Now, I haven't sent anything new in. I think I sent in a box the week I got back from Florida, but I haven't sent anything in since. I've not been finding any CDs or books. Uh, I have not been specifically looking for them other than going to estate sales. Uh, because I like to buy in bulk and when they're cheap. Um, but the estate sales have been pretty slow lately, and the ones I've been to haven't had any CDs. So, yeah, pretty darn slim there. And, of course, if you do sell media on Amazon, you know they just sent out a message that they're increasing fees again. Now, I think it's mainly for Merchant Fulfilled. I'm not sure about FBA. But a lot of people on the um, Amazon message boards are talking about it and talking about how it's going to kill the penny sellers. What a lot of penny books are is it's people who do mass quantities. Um, so they're they're selling thousands of books a day. They sell them for a penny. They get $3.99 from Amazon for shipping. And then they get a super cheap rate on media mail from the post office. So their um, net profit on every book is $0.50, cents, which... Of course, doesn't sound like much unless you're doing thousands and thousands of books a day. Um, so that's how the penny sellers work. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Like I said, never put all your eggs in the Amazon basket, and I'm just doing it for extra now. So I would like to get some more CDs and stuff in there, but they just keep changing the rules and the fees like they always do. That's what Amazon's always going to do. Um, so I just kind of roll with it while you can. And um, in the meantime, I definitely see much more... A profit from selling on eBay. It is now Monday and I just accepted a best offer of $12.50 on this Iowa Hawkeye. Um, it's like a tin mug with a glass bottom. It's from the Gator Bowl 1983. I've had it for a while. Um, I just put best offer on everything so that's why offers are coming in. And um, I picked it up for maybe 50 cents. Can't remember. Not much. Uh, you can see it weighs under a pound, so it is going to go via first class in one of the uh, plain boxes I keep on hand. Yeah, that'll that'll be a fit for it. So it is now Monday night. I've had a super busy day with errands and work. I mean, Mondays, I don't care if you work for yourself or for somebody else or if you work from home or outside the home or even if you don't work have a pain job, you know, Mondays are just like insanity. So I'm not even going to pretend that I'm going to get anything listed tonight because I am just too tired. But um, there's always tomorrow, right? So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up for this week's see and sell episode. If you guys are liking these videos, please be sure to give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And check the links below for my eBay books. I have my eBay, Amazon video playlist here, and anything I mentioned in the video, like the supplies I use, I will link those below as well. So, until next week, let's hope sales pick up. <laughs> I'll see you then. Bye.